All right. Today, I want to talk about being a man of your word and why that is so important. So there are a lot of traditions. And if you look back through history, the idea of honor, you know, what do you think of when you think of honor, integrity, respect? What comes to mind for me is the samurai or the Spartans or men in World War II. There was this uh, tradition of excellence forged upon being a man of your word, being a man of integrity. And that means being a man who, when you say you're going to do something, you do it, even at the expense of your health in some in some cases. Uh, and for a lot of people throughout history, for a lot of men, it was more important to be a man of honor than to even be alive. And I'm not saying put your health at risk for this necessarily, but, you know, I think of the seppuku, uh, seppuku in uh, the samurai tradition where if they dishonored themselves or faced dishonor, they would literally kill themselves. And I'm not saying, or encouraging that by any means, but I just want to exemplify the the gravity, the, the amount of seriousness that was attributed to that. And in society today, in modernity, we've lost touch with that. And so I've been part of a, a number of men's groups and one particular group I was part of, we really hammered in the point of being a man of integrity. And, and this meant making commitments to the group, in front of the group, in front of the tribe, and then setting consequences if those were not met. So if I'm committed to not smoking cigarettes, I don't smoke, but this is an example, then, and I, and I break that by smoking one day, the consequence might be I have to run a mile in the snow. Something like that where you set a consequence that leans into your edge that makes it really suck um, and reminds you of, wow, I really fucked up. And, and it's important that you make, you set the consequence for yourself and make it so that you really don't want to break that. This is how I was able to go a year on semen retention, 12 months, because the consequence if I broke that was to carry two kettlebells two miles and do 222 burpees. And the reason I knew I didn't want to do that was because I had set a goal. I had done six months semen retention. And as soon as I, I did that, I did another six months and I failed like three days in. And there's a lesson there. The one lesson being when you set a commitment and you reach it, it's important to set milestones along the way and reward yourself, acknowledge yourself for a job well done. It's very easy to get down on ourselves, to beat ourselves up. But, uh, you know, men aren't typically rewarded by society for feats, for con contributions. It's often expected of us to do these things instead of acknowledged and affirmed. I mean, you see this with veterans. They come back from war and not much attention is given to them, which is not right. It's not the case. It shouldn't be the case. And so what I've learned is I, I broke some of my commitments recently. And then I, I, and I told one friend in particular to hold me accountable to. And I told him yesterday, I said, listen, man, I broke my commitments. And I actually forgot what the consequences were. I didn't look at the consequences. But going back and looking at the consequences, I said, holy shit, dude. These are way too intense. These were borderline masochistic. And this kind of then reinforces a cycle of suffering. Of like, well, every time I fuck up, I have to suffer. But know that on the quest, if you decide to take this quest of self-improvement, personal growth, and building a growth mindset, and being trying to be a man of your word, you're going to stumble on the way. And so typically what would happen is, in these groups that I've been part of, when we broke a commitment, when we faced the consequence, we had to get cleaned up by the group to get us back in honor, get us back in integrity. And so I told them, listen, man, I can't, I can't do these consequences. Like, um, one was run 10 miles consecutively, pay $500 to charity, 
um, and do like 222, it's always 222, 22 burpees. That was for one commitment. The other one was take four men and give them free coaching for three months. And the third one was for every week I fail to commit, I have to donate $10 to charity. So right now that's $620. Uh, that is three months of free coaching for four people. That is 10 miles consecutively. And that is 220 burpees. One, I don't have the time for the coaching. I don't have the money to donate to charity at the moment. Um, or rather I should say, <laughs> it's already happened. Time hasn't caught up, let's manifest that. And three, uh, last time I ran, I ran six miles and I messed up my knee because I don't run. So already there, there's an issue. But I told them, I said, I need, I want to get back into honor. I want to clean myself up. What can I do? How can I mend this? Um, and so we've come up with something different that still encompasses uh, contributing to charity as well as uh, running like a 5K. And so this is something that I have have him holding me accountable to. We're working through. And now I know when I make a commitment in the future, be mindful of how many commitments I make. Be mindful of the severity of the consequence. You want to lean into your edge. The edge is that that boundary of, of your comfort zone and then discomfort. So you want to be mindful of what your edge is and, and how far into it you're leaning. But you don't want to beat yourself up and... There should be a little bit of shame there, so you don't do it again, but it should be to the point where you enter this kind of cycle of masochism, and otherwise you're not going to want to do it. Every time you do something, you punish yourself. So you want to set milestones for your success. You set a three-month commitment. Every week, you should be checking in with yourself. How am I doing? Giving yourself positive affirmations, acknowledging your progress, and it's helpful, too, to have a buddy hold you accountable or a group hold you accountable. Uh, if you're interested in that, reach out to me and I can set you up with some men's groups. Um, and you want to get involved with that as best you can because in today's society, being a man of your word is very rare. And your word holds so much weight. And that's really what dictates how and when people respect you. Even if it's to the point where you're, you say you're going to be here at whatever, noon and you're here at 1230, and this is a consistent process. I know some people who do that. Oh, I'm 10 minutes away. They haven't even left yet. So I've, I've lost, I lose my trust in that person every time they say that. And when I lose trust in them, I respect them less. I can't count on them, I can't depend on them. But when you set standards for yourself, like, hey, this is how I, this is who I am, this is what I do. When you change your identity and make choices aligned with that identity, you're true to your word, you hold yourself accountable to your word, you have people hold you accountable to your word and push you when you're not, that's how you become someone who people do respect. And there is a very clear energy when people respect you. I'm grateful to be at a point now where a lot of people I interact with, they might not like me, but they respect me. And a good reason for that is I hold myself to this, I hold them to the same standard to hold myself to. And this is, to be careful with this though too, because if you hold yourself to too high of a standard, it may be unrealistic to expect that of others. You should never expect others to think the same way that you do, but you can condition them, you can teach them how to treat you through how you treat yourself. So there's a lot there. Um, being a man of your word, being a man of integrity is very rare today. And when you do that, when you walk through life, there is an aura to you that people can feel. Like, oh, this, like, this guy doesn't fuck around. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't have fun. But at the end of the day, being a purpose-driven, a mission-led man is important. And being a man of your word and of your integrity goes right along with that. Um, the idea of being purpose-driven and mission-led is something I want to talk more about in future videos. Because it's coming up more for me. Right now, I'm really building a life of fulfillment um, and trying to reduce my stress, reducing my stress as much as possible by identifying what those stressors are. Um, but when you're being led by a mission, like this is what I'm trying to accomplish. Even if it doesn't have a full shape or form, but you can draw energy from it, you can invest energy into it, that's where magic starts to happen. And all the little bullshit things that worried you in the past fall by the wayside. So a lot here, I know I'm bouncing around, 
but the main point I want to underline is how truly important and one of a kind and unique it is to be a man of your word, to be a man of integrity and honor and respect. And that will make you feel better and that will make others respect you more and feel better around you. And a lot of that also has to do, let me touch on this real quick, is how you appear. So your physical appearance, do you work out? Are you taking care of yourself? What are the foods you're eating? Your hygiene, taking a shower, changing your clothes regularly, washing them. Um, how you speak, even to the point, and I, I make this mistake a lot, the speed at which you speak. I often speak very fast or have spoke, spoken very fast in the past. The volume at which you speak. There's a lot to that. We can dive into that in another video, but for right now, I'll leave you with that. Um, if you've been watching my videos, I want to say thank you. Uh, please like this video and hit that subscribe button if you feel called to it. A lot more coming your way real soon, and I appreciate you as always. Peace.